Hey guys, today I'm going to be making my video on often overlooked and underutilized topics and concepts for high level blaze blue play. Uh, this video is going to highlight offense and I might go into neutral concepts as well. I guess you'll see by the time this video comes out <laughs> what the title of the video is, but we're going to start off with offense. Um, this isn't really a resource for beginner level players or even like lower intermediate players. This is more targeted towards high intermediate play and like high level players to try to take them to the next level and like improve consistency in their game and just like generally bring up their level of play. Uh, offense, I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff like space control. Um, how pressure ideas should change through matchups, how you should default to option coverage, and try to maintain high option coverage, low risk situations, and like do as little hard engagement as possible, and uh, also talk about like the strength of preying on player response and targeting inputs, how to structure pressure to negate like play that can be beat if you're predictable, like um, how to fight against IB and IBB, and how to structure your pressure so that your opponent has to take massive risk to get out of it, whereas you take like minimal risk to continue it. Um, how and when you should go for mix-ups, and how you should cover escape options and escape attempts from your opponent. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the strength of forward movement and dash blocking on your own offense. Just like general space control during pressure and like how you can control situations and force a risk onto your opponent with without really doing much of anything yourself. So Facings like this and positions like this with you as the attacker, they give you a lot of room to cover options without really committing to anything. Like, for example, let's say I do something like this, and I'm playing against any character that doesn't immediately start looping 50-50s on me off of like a 5A, like, the way you deal with spacing against like Carl or Rachel or something is a little bit different just because they can do that. For, for the vast majority of the cast, let's just pretend that I'm in a situation like this. What options does my opponent have here? If I'm content with just holding the space and waiting and seeing what kind of response they're going to give me, well, they don't really have much they can do. It's basically like... a rock, paper, scissors, except rock beats four options, and it's only soft loss is mashing, so... Like, okay. In this situation, they can come on to me and mash, but like... Why should I care? I can just IBB them back into the corner, and the further I push them back, the harder it is for them to escape. Even more so. Because if I'm in this situation, the only thing they can do is press on me, or jump and try to force an escape, which is not easy, not hard to cover. A reaction. Even if they, even if I pick like a risky option and air throw them, if they tech it, I have an air option, and they have used theirs. And even if they haven't used theirs, I'm still in a favorable position to cover any attempts that they try to make till they get out of the corner. Um, Basically, the way you should think about it is moving forward on my own pressure, dash blocking on my own pressure, doing whatever that's like a passive movement, but isn't like so passive that I'm fully giving up space, and isn't like so aggressive that I'm committing to anything, gives me options to cover whatever. If they jump, I lock them down, I jail them to the ground. They gotta hold that. I might be able to catch them with an air block if they're not ready. 
They try to mash, like I showed you. I just IBB them back into the corner. They can't really do shit about it. Um, they backdash, like who cares, lol, they're in the corner. I either just straight up catch it on reaction, or I just cover them, and I'm super plus. If they DP, then I mean, the situation that I'm forcing here, I'm just fucking waiting. They DP here, and they literally die. So like, the only thing they can do is mash. And mashing still doesn't give them a very high reward in this situation. So just, like, actively maintaining space and moving forward on my own offense, something that's very strong, really not super utilized by a lot of players because they want to just continue to press buttons and push their advantage and, like, actively establish a pressure situation, even though it's not really necessary most of the time. Okay, mid-screen, you should think about the situation very similarly. It's almost the same deal, except, like, they obviously have the option to move backwards, so you have to be more ready for that and, like, acknowledge that sometimes you're just going to straight up lose out on your pressure because they're going to move back fast enough, like, through a button, like, say, fucking bang, backdashes perfectly through my 5B. I can't really chase him down, effectively, but... Like, this, the way you approach the situation is identical. You just acknowledge that they can move in more ways. I mean, you still can track down, like, backwards approaches. Like, say I'm doing two-way staggers. And they do some shit like this. I couldn't chase them down, but it's not as easy as it is to cover everything in the corner. So matchup by matchup, these things are going to change a bit. Like for example, against Carl, Rachel Valk, you're not going to want to be right in front of them. Just like waiting, kind of just enforcing the threat of any option since you have their back to corner and like forcing risk because like if they do just mash, all of a sudden you block the 5A from one of these characters, you're eating 17 50 50s in a row. You don't want to do the shit versus like Tager either because Rose going to fucking turn 360A and beat the shit out of you. But what do you do against these characters? Because you're like, oh man, I can't apply these concepts that I'd normally apply. I'm shit out of luck. I can't do anything. Well, that's not exactly the case. So, against all of these characters, they have two flaws. So, flaw number one is usually their buttons are stubbier than normal. So, Carl, Rachel, even Valk, all have relatively stubby buttons. So, like, for most characters, you can abuse spacings like here, this this area about, and you can still do shit and they can't really do anything without like committing to something really big like a Carl 5C or Rachel 6B or whatever. Um, the other issue is that their movement sucks. So, I hear you, you're saying like, well, Rachel and Valk have super super good movement. They do if they burn resources and like take extra time and force extra risk onto themselves to do things but like baseline movement for all these characters is not the best you continue your pressure situations with like abusing spacings and abusing spacing traps since they can't like get to you because their movement's not great you just like continue to pressure these characters and do the exact same things from a further distance um you abuse the threat of option coverage in the same ways. If they try to jump out, you cover them. It actually makes it easier to cover these options because, like I said, their movement's worse. And they have, like, more distance they need to travel to get out of the corner or away from you. Um, you space relative to, like, what their movement speed is. Like, since Rachel has a normal run, you might want to space yourself a little bit further. Since she can just kind of dash up and do shit. But, like, Carl, you don't have to respect him. Valk, don't really have to respect him. Tager, don't have to respect him. Etc. Etc. And then you also want to base things around player reactions. So, if you know someone has really, really strong reactions, you don't necessarily want to do shit like this because they might just anti air you. But, like, since you know a player has strong reactions, then the, that they'll do things like that. You can play to force player player reactions and bait like stuff like this. Just fucking bait people. You don't have to commit if you maintain your spacings, so you want to force like risk from them. Just continue to stack 
situations where they're uncomfortable and they want to give you a response, and then whenever they finally do give you that response, you blow them up for it. Alright, I've gone over covering jumps a bit, or like when you should be covering jumps, but now I'm going to just like explain to you how, because it is incredibly important to cover jumps. Like, if you can change it so that every single time you're making an opponent block a button in the air, instead of it just like resetting neutral, if you're getting the hit, you're like doing a combo and bring them to the ground, and if you're making them block, you're jailing them all the way to the ground and establishing pressure immediately, that like, that automatically makes you become so, so much more threatening as a player, just because like, if any button means like, disadvantage, then like, fighting you in the air becomes so, so much scarier. So I guess, let me go ahead and set them to jump. How you should approach, like, covering jumps. If you're a character who has, like, a shit ton of extra air momentum and, like, air movement, like, bang. Like I just showed, you could do, like, big button, IED, string to the ground. But for the most part, most characters are going to have to do some shit like this. And just, like, do jabs. And then maybe go into, like, JB, JC, jail to the ground. Which really isn't bad, because most characters have, like, decent JAs for contesting, like, Jumping air to air is like this. It's really not like a super, super big issue. Um, some characters have like really strong, like extra ways they can cover jumps, like bang, air command grab. I can like fucking string into it and do a tick throw in the air, which like you don't have any other option but to mash there if you think I'm gonna do it, so forces a shit ton of risk on my opponent. Um, you can do shit like that to TRM people in the air since most people aren't going to... Like, they're just gonna smash throw tech as soon as you jump up to them. So you'll get a lot of free TRMs that way. And then... Like, besides those super basic methods of, like, covering air stuff, you want to acknowledge that most characters have something like that, where they can left right you on the ground after an air string. Uh, most characters is like JAA, JBJC. Some characters is a little different, but like almost anyone can do it if you properly jail them and properly move, use like a move that has high block stop and gives you enough time to run under and crouch under the ground. And that just like gives you a mix-up option on characters who don't have great mix whenever someone jumps and just like makes jumping more threatening because your opponent knows that they have to hold a mix once they get to the ground which isn't fun and it's especially good if you can do some shit where like you uh like they're an air unblockable dim so it's like even scarier if you're not only holding a left right, but you also have to barrier it and like can get air unblockable into a shit ton of damage off of it. Okay, now that I've talked about option coverage on offense and where you should implement patience and how you should like cover responses your opponent gives you, now I'm gonna actually explain how you should hit your opponent. So the idea is basically, like, you want to keep your offense up and going for as long as possible while, like, mitigating risk. So, to do this, you want to keep your pressure really unpredictable, but, like, still strong. And, like, abuse the concepts that I mentioned previously where just like hold spacings and like sit in areas where your opponent can't really do much but you can cover pretty much any option they want to give you. You sprinkle that in alongside just like strong understanding of stagger pressure and it takes you pretty far but to push even further than that there are two ideas that you want to implement. You want to implement um Preying on like player response and targeting inputs, doing a bunch of shit where you're directly conditioning your opponent to give you certain responses and blowing those responses up. Like I kind of mentioned earlier, 
And then also, you want to be really strategic about your mix-ups, and like, when and where you use mix-ups is very, very important. So, I'm going to go ahead and start with pray, ah, praying on player response. So basically, how you should approach praying on player response, which like kind of kind of a big concept. It's kind of like, how am I supposed to know what my opponent wants to do at any point in time? Well, the best way to do that is to structure your pressure in a way where there's only one right answer, and then be very, very fucking ready for that one right answer that they can give you. And whenever they give you it, you mitigate your own risk and like the problem that you're given for them picking the right answer. And then if they don't do it, you blow them up for whatever. So by doing this, you kind of want to like give your opponent false positives, I guess. So like condition them to think that you want to do things and then do things that beat them. So like say I'm playing Ragna because that's the character I have picked right now. I structure my pressure into 2C, and notice that they want to, like, IB to 2C. Like, okay, I'm normally doing my 2C after 5B or 2B, and they're IBing it consistently, but... The prior times, they haven't challenged me. I'm like, okay, they clearly want to do something, because they're IBing this plus normal, and they know I know that they want to do something, so I'm like, okay, what are my options here? Well, I guess the baseline, like layer one option would be, okay, do 2C, I do delayed Gatling, and blow them up for like, trying to reaction take their turn. They go, okay, I'm gonna start fuzzy mashing or just hard mashing on it, then I change my pressure, just do a normal frame trap, blow them up that way. Um. So that's like a layer one response. It's just like putting another button out there to stop what they try to do because they're like dealing with this option by I being it. A higher level response and something that you could do be like, oh shit, that throws me off really hard for them. You can just be like, okay, I'm just going to reset my pressure on 2B because. I know they're looking for 2C, I'm not going to give it to them, I'm just going to exploit them trying to IB it, because I know they're going to press back right in that time frame, I'm just going to run up again and restart my pressure. Or, I'm like, okay, I know they're going to try to just regular IB this 2C every single time, I'm going to crush trigger, because I know they're not going to IBB, because they're trying to regular IB this shit. They're less likely to react, and they're going to fucking explode for trying to do this. So, that would be like... A pretty solid response to some shit like this. Um, another response, kind of character specific for like Ragna, would be do a dead spike or do like a delayed but dead spike where they're looking for the 2C, um, 60 where they're looking for the 2C, etc. Let's say my opponent's trying to IBB me out the 2C whiffs instead. But what are my options here? Okay. At this point, I can abuse spacing the spacing game because I'm like, I'm at this really nice range from the corner. I'm like two and a half, maybe three characters lengths away. After just like them blocking a few things. They're not in a situation where they can like run up and press buttons on me. They have to commit really fucking hard to do that, and I can just like continue my string. And the risk reward for them to do that is just really, really bad. So, knowing this, I get to apply the concepts we spoke about earlier, and I get to uh, basically just use the spacing game, hold my position, cover options they try to choose, and then just like continue pressure as normal. So I'm like, okay, the IB beat me out. They're gonna try to fuzzy jump here, because like, what else are they gonna do? I jail them to the ground, they're like, okay, shit, 
Well, I can't fuzzy jump next time, because that's what they're gonna respond. So, what do I do next time? Okay, I know they probably think... They're like, okay, I can't fuzzy jump, I should choose some kind of other response. That time I dead spike, and I get back in, because I know they're not gonna respond to me with the option that I previously showed them that they shouldn't use. Obviously, like, it's a case-by-case -case thing. Sometimes people slam the same option multiple times. Sometimes people just do whatever. Humans are humans. They're not going to, like, be a robot and let you condition them perfectly. But you limit options, and you make it to where things are, like, not very risky for you to do shit. So, like, let's say I do this, and I do the 2C whiff. Well, the 2C whiff delayed will cover them doing, like, a fuzzy micro dash mash. We'll blow them the fuck up for that. And we'll make it so that I can cover a fuzzy jump, and basically the only thing that will beat me is, like, a perfectly timed fuzzy dash mash. Like, not even a fuzzy dash. They'd have to react to the 2C and whiff punish it. Or... They could, uh... react and run up an established pressure, but, like... And I just IVB them back to the corner from that stage. So they really don't have any just like super, super strong options that threaten me if they decide to like IVB me out. Um, another thing that's good is if your opponent is trying to like IVB you or barrier you out, you can't both barrier and jump at the same time. Like I'm holding up back. Let me turn inputs on for a second. Like, I can't, I can't jump and barrier at the same time. I have to, like, fully commit to pressing up. I need to let go of barrier. So, knowing this, I know that throws are stronger. And especially if I'm playing a character as a command grab, I know that command grabs are, like, way fucking stronger. And if my opponent, like, starts to abuse this fact, and knows that I'm going to go for throws here, and is like, ready to detect them, and I just abuse that as a reset point. Or if they want to mash the throws, I just frame trap them, and abuse that as like, a point to try to blow them up and punish them for trying to press, or jump. Um, I haven't even really talked about mix-ups or anything in that nature, but like, Ideally, you want to use mix-ups after you've, like, A, in situations where your opponent's just not expecting it to come out at all. Like, say something like this. Let's uh, take them off of instant barrier here. So let's say that, like, I get my opponent to block 2C. They're like, okay, I'm ready to accept pressure again. Because I got, like, I blocked the normal. Maybe maybe they're fuzzy mashing. If they're fuzzy mashing, then you do, like, other things we already talked about. But let's say that, like, you've conditioned them to stop fuzzy mashing. Okay. I'm plus here. What what are they going to do now? They're going to, like, run back up 2A, and I'm going to have to deal with it, right? I could do some shit like that. I could do something like that to, uh... Like, blow them up with their hard teching. Or if they're, like, trying to time their IBB or IB on my 2A. Um... I could do something like that, like a TRM setup right there. They probably wouldn't expect it. Um, just like, you want to use your mix-ups whenever your opponent's going to be thinking about other shit. So like, say I'm 2A staggering. I do like 3 2As, I'm like, okay, I know they want a fuzzy jump, so I'm like... And I do a 5A and catch a fuzzy jump right there. Like 2A, 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 they fuzzy jump right there. I 5A them, they stand up and catch it, they're like, okay, shit, I got a block, and you throw them. That's like, a situation where they're not going to be ready for a mix-up attempt. Um, say I fucking... Say I keep doing like... I keep doing like, uh, fucking... Gauntlet Hades, I like tip range, and not canceling it with meter. I could do like, delayed cancel, 
to catch my opponent for trying to reactively punish it after conditioning them to like know that they're going to be able to times before and then just like stop that habit and stop that like um that train of fucking thought and like that sequence that I keep on repeating just all of a sudden break it and punish my opponent for trying to do what they've been conditioned to respond with um so yeah ideally like you want to just hit your opponent with shit that they're not expecting by conditioning prior options and then all of a sudden coming out with new shit or just doing things in spots where they seem kind of weird. Like, dead spike in the jump. Hello? Like, dead spike in the jump like this is super, like, it's rarely going to get anti aired because your opponent's, like, not going to be ready for you to jump there. Um, like, obviously, if you, like, represent it multiple times and just keep doing it, then yeah, maybe they'll fucking run under you. And, or, like, just raw enter you, do whatever, and, like, give you a good response after you show the same thing multiple times, but, like, if you give them weird shit that they're not prepared to deal with, They have to, like, come up with responses that don't feel comfortable to them. Like, they need to fucking find them, and then you just start using them, and then you just switch up your shit, and you blow up the things that they already felt uncomfortable for doing, and just, like, continue the cycle of them not feeling comfortable under your pressure, because you're doing, like, weird timings, weird mix-up attempts, you're, like, covering things they're trying to do with the things I showed you prior, and then just like, you want to structure your pressure so that it's low risk, high option coverage, and then just like, it feels fucking weird and uncomfortable to deal with. Which is like, easier said than done, but it's definitely something that can be done. It's pretty strong whenever you like, blend everything together and make your opponent just feel fucking hopeless whenever you do get on them and start fucking even just like throwing mids at them with Ragna. Then just to go back to player response, just a little bit, show you on a different character, maybe help clear things up that they weren't as clear as they could have been prior. Um, it's really the same shit across the board. Obviously if you're playing a character who just like farms 50-50s like Carl or Rachel or whatever, you don't have to think about this as much because you're just like forcing your opponent to guess. But if you're playing most of the cast, these concepts are the same, so crush trigger is good when you're baiting IBs. Throw is good whenever you're baiting like barriers and IBBs. Um, giving your opponent like ample time to react to something, and then hitting them. Whenever they do finally react, is strong. Uh, doing shit like this. Doing shit like baiting options is like really really good. Like if you're a command grab character, intentionally doing like a fake run up. And then jumping and jailing them to the ground is really good. Bang is a fucking cheater character and I have an air command grab so I can just fucking do it anyways. You wanna react, but you know. But yeah. Like preying on your opponent's response is a really, really strong thing to implement. It kinda depends on like what you can do character by character. Like, um, Let's say you're on easy yoi and you're playing against Bang. You can do like a bunch of shit that leaves you slightly minus, but like leaves you at this spacing, and you can just fucking slam 2C because he doesn't have a button to contest you. And like if he tries to do 5B or 2B, it'll either trade and it'll be like a really shit trade, or it'll just straight up win. So, like, depending on matchup and depending on character, you can do a lot of stuff. 
baiting like player response. It's not even necessarily a offensive concept only. It's pretty strong and neutral too. Like uh, say I'm playing like Bang Azreal. And I keep doing ID nail approaches. So he's like, okay, I'm gonna growler you. And then I just do. Jump at him in barrier, and doesn't have 50 meter, and I land and I counter hit his growler, and he fucking eats 5k damage and explodes. Shit like that. Just, like, apply the concepts wherever you can for preying on player response through, like, conditioned outcomes, and it, like, it stacks up really quickly, and it gives you, like, really, really strong situations. Neutral. The stage of the game where both players are able to do things and no one has explicit advantage. Um, I've decided that I do want to talk about it in this video. It's kind of like, it's a really, really broad topic to go over. So I don't know if I'm going to cover like, well, I'm obviously not going to cover every aspect of neutral, but I'm going to cover a few things that I think a lot of people like struggle to deal with super, super well, or like struggle to implement super well. The first of which is maintaining spacing, which kind of sounds like something like everybody tries to maintain like certain spacings but I guess a lot of people kind of like in the course of a match kind of forget about that fact and end up just like running around and doing shit but it's really important to acknowledge where your character shines and like what kind of ranges you should try to play and like try to very carefully stay in those ranges like I'm fucking bang I want to be like this area be slightly further so I can do shit like IED nil. I don't want to get sent full screen because I don't want my, in this example we're talking about, to like hop up and toss JD. So, she tries to retreat, get to further screen position. I try to mirror that and stay within that range. It's almost like, uh, you ever seen like boxers circling where they're obviously moving constantly, but they're always trying to like keep that similar distance. It's the same concept, just applied to a fighting game, which kind of a goofy example, but like it's pretty important to maintain your optimal spacings. Like for a character like Ragna, well, like 5B is like this range. I'm gonna say like here, so you can always be in range. Do 665B if you need to, but. <clears throat> stay out of range of most of the shit that your opponent wants to do. I think that is really, really strong. It gets kind of complex whenever you add in air movement, but... Same shit applies for the most part. It's just, uh... Once you start adding verticality to these things, it's like... Your response becomes less... Me... Me walk into area and press button, and more so like, I have to pick and choose my options here because I have the option to anti-air, I have the option to run under, I have the option to fucking meet with an air-to-air, -air, whatever. I already talked about jumps before, but I just want to like, reiterate the fact that covering jumps isn't something you only do on offense. like. Jumping up and meeting someone in the air and jailing them to the ground is a super important concept that you should like implement to all stages of play. On offense it's strong, but honestly in neutral it's even stronger because like getting immediate offense off of anything blocked in the air is fucking crazy. Like I can literally name one single player who I play who like does that shit consistently and like how threatening it is to challenge them in the air is fucking night and day between anyone else I play. Shit is really, really fucking good. Everyone needs to like hard, hard practice doing that shit, because it is insanely strong to make your air, like any air option you choose, like, guarantee offense. So, a really, really strong thing for most characters' offense. There are a couple characters where it's like, they're, they're the aggressor, or they're the one who's like doing shit all the time, like zoners, or like nine, or whatever, who like, they're putting shit out into the game for you to interact with rather than the other way around, but like most characters should probably be approaching the game to hit your opponent for trying to hit you, which is like, it sounds really simple. It is kind of simple, but it's a little deeper than just whiff punishing since there's so much shit you can be doing in this game. Um, 
I guess just to like break down into examples so y'all can know what I'm talking about better. You think, okay, I'm in a neutral situation versus, I mean, let's just say the neutral situation we have on the screen. I'm in a neutral situation versus my. What are the things that are probably going to happen? And like, how is this character going to try to hit me as the bang player? Well, there's a good chance they do like 5A plink 5C and do like the big poke. We're like, okay, well, what can I do to fight them in this position? Well, I could do something like this. Like, okay, what kind of answers do they have to this? They could, instead of doing that, they could be patient and wait. Like, okay, I know how he wants to respond to my layer one option that I'm probably going to choose. What do I as the my player do, since that's what he wants to do? I'm like, okay, well, then I can just fucking, on response to their jump, I can react and jump and J them. So me, all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, I know that if I jump, they want to challenge me in the air from that stage. So I'm going to jump and try to like jump in a position where I either just don't put myself in range of them, or I jump with like a falling button or something and catch them trying to jump up to me. <clears throat> and then in the situation where I do just like neutral jump and bait their own jump, I could do something like that. I could do something like that, like a delayed press to catch them further. So it's very much a back and forth of established things and just like also tight reactions to things your opponent's doing. Um, but the general idea for neutral is you want to be trying to hit your opponent for trying to hit you as often as possible. You want to rarely just like throw big shit out there. Like if you're Ragnar, you want to rarely just fucking YOLO 5B, be like, oh, hey, I hope they run into this. You want to try to catch your opponent doing shit, for the most part. Then this is the main topic I wanted to cover for neutral. So, in Blaze Blue, we have really strong anti-airs. Um, anti-air property moves are like kind of all-encompassing in a lot of situations, so it's like many people never really learn how to incorporate like other anti-air methods into their play. So they kind of just like crutch on their head and vault anti-airs. Then they play against someone where they're like, okay, they're only using this one, like, albeit strong option, but, like, it's only one option, so I'm just gonna fucking abuse the hell out of it, like, same on Bang. Like, okay, I'm gonna D-nail right above Ragnar's 6A range constantly, or, like, same on fucking Jin, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna jump and then J2C above Mai's 2C constantly, or Ragnar's 6A constantly, or whatever. How should we, as a player approach air approaches besides just like slamming my fucking head and roll reversal well depends there are a few different options we have so just jumping and air i being like this is really really strong you can challenge on the way down although it's kind of risky but like just doing this and jumping out IB is really strong. Can I, I can I air IB please? Like backdashing out, really strong. Especially if you're on like character like Bang, double air dash, like get the fuck out of dodge. Um Run unders are really strong in this game. For like ID approaches, run unders are incredibly strong in this game. So let's see. I do something like that, where it's like, okay. Like here, I run under, I'm all the way out. Here, I'm like, in a plus situation, like I just punish that shit. I know I can get in the air, maybe. You get the idea. Like, I end up in a situation where I'm super favored, like that. Um. I could do like run under and then jump. For an IED approach, run under jump isn't quite as strong, but uh for a situation like this, run under jump is really good because what if they try to choose something like this? Then I'm like 
next to them. The challenge. Um, this is also strong because it's like it beats the options that like are just like good and neutral, and then it also beats the options that like beat baited anti -airs. So Like okay, I want a 2D. Oh shit, I just exploded. So run at a jump is really really good for like situations where your opponent just like neutral jumps at you and does shit like that. Um, run at a button is like a little better for ID approaches. Uh, and then besides situations where like we're like okay, my opponent's just fucking running at me, so I'm gonna run under them. Or like besides situations where you're just like completely dodging your opponent. Like taking no risk. You can also do things like wrong recording, whoops. Non head and volnancy airs are pretty strong. So basically like how non head and volnancy airs normally work is the hitbox on them is irrelevant. It's like how much displacement is there on the hurt box between the frame before it goes active and the frame whenever it like goes active is. So like bang, the frame before it goes active is like around here. Like maybe a frame or two later is like as far as he goes. Like around where his fist is right now is like as much as the hurt box extends. And then like the frame it goes active, it like the hitbox goes all the way out like to where the hospital sign is. So even though it's not that disjointed, it's like the singular frame displacement of his hurt box means that it'll trade consistently. So, like, okay, this trade is fucking godlike. I get a full combo there. I can keep my shit going. This is also really strong because. Oops. It's also really strong because the thing about normal buttons is that they have much less recovery than anti airs. So, let's say I do 2D here. I'm getting punished. Sucks for me. Like, okay, I can block, just barely. Let me make a cleaner recording. That works better. Holy shit. Okay, y'all get the idea. Let me fucking... Where's this dude at? This works out better for my example. Maybe. Maybe not. You'll get the idea. It's much easier to bait anti airs because they have like added recovery compared to normal buttons than just like a normal button. So, if I do just 2v here, I have a shit, to shit ton of time compared to if I whiff 2d. Um, let's say I'm Jin. Like a whiff 2c. Takes forever for me to recover. I whiff 5c. I'm chilling. So. I'm bang and I try to like jump in on Jin. I just fucking. Uh, I'll just do this. This will be easiest to showcase things. Slam so Jin. I 5c. I fucking cook. Let's say... I don't have the recording set. Whoops. Same principle. Holy shit, dude. Same deal. How am I so ass? That should work, right? I can do some shit like this, where I'm like, okay, 
I just get to whiff my button ends here. Dude. Dude. You get you get the picture. So compared to traditional anti airs, like buttons that you're opting to either try to trade or like just like anti air that don't have head and bone, like five C's, a lot of characters five V's, like it depends character to character, like if you can do this and how consistent you can do it. But if you're on a character that can do it, non head and bone anti airs are really fucking strong because they don't get with punishes as easily. They're not baited as easily. Or they're not like as easy to punish on bait. And then like the rewards you get for them are much, much higher than Nancier. Like if Ragna 6 A's you, he gets like 3k damage. If Jin 2 C's you, he doesn't get crazy damage. If Jin counter hits you with fucking 5 C in the air, you're literally gonna die. Like you're gonna fucking explode. Unless I'm bad. Dude. You get the idea. That does like 4k, 4.5k damage. So, abusing non head and anti airs, extremely strong. Abusing concepts like running under it, jumping attacks. Super, super strong. Doing shit like jumping, air IB, really, really strong. Just like smashing head and bone anti airs has a time and a place, and it's not bad in this game by any means necessary. It's still really fucking good, but it really shouldn't be your baseline. And then another thing that I kind of forgot to talk about um, this is kind of character by character, because not every character can do this, but if you have a really good 5 anti air, like Ragna. It's just like a reactionary response. That shit's super strong. Characters like uh, Azrael kind of do this. Azrael kind of like combines both this and his uh, just like non head and Volnantier with both his 5A and 5B. Kind of like does the same thing with both. Um, other characters like Ragna, like Jin can do this shit. Kagra does this kind of shit. Kazuma does this kind of shit. Um, a really strong concept to implement as well, just like anti with your 5A, but like general rule of thumb, like the thing I'm going to talk about the most from neutral, like the thing I want you to take from this video in context of neutral is stop slamming head and anti airs, like praying that your opponent doesn't bait them, and do less committal things. They give you really, really good advantage. Like, like I was saying before, all the options, but like, it's just. Give like a practical example. Shim some shit like that. If I try to 6A here, like, yeah, it can work. Sometimes. But it's risky because he can just jump again, or it can cross me up, or it can do whatever. If I like try to jump in air IB, strong option to represent. Let's me out of the corner sometimes. Can be a little tricky to time, but whatever. Um, dashing out is really strong, but it can be caught by like stuff like that sometimes if you're not clean on the dash. But it's probably your most consistent option outside of like specific matchups and specific spacings, but. Dashing under is really, really good, and the positioning it gives you is really fucking strong. And like I said before, dashing and jumping is really, really good, because if they do opt to like double jump or whatever, you can cover that really, really easily. Um, and then, I mean, Ragna can't really do it. Ragna doesn't have a good button to trade with anti or trade with air, uh, air attacks like that, but if you're on a character, they can like trade like Jin or whatever with a 5C. Also, a super strong option to be representing all the time because of like it become it's really fucking tricky to with punish and all that other shit that I was talking about. I want to say, let me check my notes. I want to say that's basically it for what I wanted to cover on this video. There's definitely like <clears throat> a lot more shit on neutral that like 
neutral is a super complex topic. Like it's like by far the most rich topic in the game, but I'm not trying to cover anywhere near all of neutral. I just had a couple small things and then the fucking the anti air thing. People not abusing anti airs and like ways that you can anti air in this game properly in this game. It's something that I think should change and something that I think a lot of players need to like recognize and look at and be like, okay, I should try to implement this better. And just like abusing non traditional anti airs is really, really good. Also, fucking, I keep on forgetting shit. Uh, just like rising, rising buttons on reaction. Really good anti air as well. That one's uh, kind of a little bit more of a call out because of how risky it is if you're not like super on point with your reaction, but it's still pretty good. And then if you're on like certain characters like Bang, <laughs> for example, you can get really good reward and you can get like pretty good reward on anyone if you're on it. Like Ragnar gets decent reward, Jin gets amazing reward. JB, Delay J, GC, the GOAT. Um, most characters can get decent reward if you're like really on your shit for an air conversion. I want to say that's kind of it for this video. I will make the defensive guide later, and then if I have any other things that I like think of that I want to talk about since... I kind of just threw this video together quickly because I really, really felt like making it. I'll throw them in then, and then alongside the defensive video, I'm not sure if I'm going to make three total or if I'm just going to make two and make the defensive video big, but in that video, I want to talk about player mentality and how it affects consistency and how you should approach mentality. like. What is the best way to like improve consistency and keep your mental strong and that kind of shit? And then um, I kind of want to talk about how you should view system mechanics and like I guess it's general resource management since there's so many resource characters in this game that like a strong understanding of how you should think about resource management is required. But obviously it changes a little bit character to character. But at the very least, I want to talk about like a bunch of system mechanic shit. So until next time, I'll catch y'all later.